Thank you, Nestle. Thank you for having me. Hello, everyone. My name is Fei Liu. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Central Florida. Today, I'm going to talk about my research on robust abstractive multi-document summarization and information consolidation. This is going to be a joint work with my PhD students, Morgan Levlov, Sam Wu Chou, Kai Chang Song, Christine Arumi. If you look at any people's life nowadays, um, we are surrounded by a lot of information. Look at this person, Zhou. He gets up in the morning and he reads some morning news. Maybe he participated in the group meeting in the morning. He checked the emails and he, after he gets off from work, he watched some sports games. Before he goes to bed, he chat a bit with her friends on social media. So nowadays, there is a massive amount of data that are being produced and consumed every day. And there's a great potential to, to consolidate those uh, information into a concise summary. So in some sense, the goal of summarization is to shrink the big data into small data and hopefully it magically becomes the grid data. In this talk, my focus will be on multi-document summarization, and the goal is to generate a coherent summary from a collection of documents discussing a particular event or topic. Last year, the Notre Dame Cathedral was on fire, and there has been a lot of articles talking about such an event. It will be very difficult to follow through all those discussions. So in this case, having a summary is highly desirable. Truth being told, summarization is most useful when it feels like there's just too much information that you couldn't read. Have you encountered any such scenarios? Well, there is a lot. Um, currently, uh, we've seen research summarizing news articles. We've seen uh, summarizing product reviews on Amazon. And nowadays, we are recording a lot of meetings. And as you can imagine, uh, in the company and other organizations, there's going to be a lot of meeting archives and the proprietary meetings. And then sooner or later, you're going to need a summarization or a search system that potentially allows you to search the meeting content. Of course, we also want to summarize emails, forum discussion threads, social media, medical reports, privacy policies, financial documents, and even survey responses. So we are particularly interested in the news domain, as this is the most resource-rich domain traditionally in natural language processing. Many of the summarization systems has to be built upon some core natural language processing components. And if we couldn't do well on the news domain, there is less chance that we could build a robust summarization system on other domains. But if we could work well on the news, then there is potential we can adapt our system to other different genres. When we talk about the summarization, traditionally we separate it into extractive summarization and abstractive summarization. The idea of extractive summarization is we want to identify the representative sentences from either a single document or a set of documents in order to form a summary. In this toy example, we can extract the first two sentences. Peter and Elizabeth took a taxi to attend the night party in the city. While in the party, Elizabeth collapsed and was rushed to the hospital. This is an extractive summary. On the other end, there is also the abstractive summarization, where the goal is to present the main points of the source documents, potentially using words and expressions that do not appear in the source text. So in this case, we have the abstractive summary. Elizabeth was hospitalized after attending a party with Peter. But extractive summaries and abstractive summaries, they are not independent of each other. There is a potential that we can first extract things from the source documents and convert that into an abstractive summary. So in this talk, uh, I'm going to talk about this multi-document abstractive summarization, and we're going to separate the two components uh, into content selection and surface realization. The goal of content selection is we want to identify the summary-worthy sentences 
from the source documents using extractive methods. And then we have a fusion or compression methods uh, in order to generate abstractive summaries. Um, and I want to emphasize that currently when we talk about abstractive summarization, it's more of shallow abstraction. It means that we allow the system to paraphrase, maybe shorten the sentences. And those are more like surface edits. We didn't really yet touch the deep meaning representation like abstract meaning representation. Uh, in this talk, I'm gonna first talk about a optimization framework based on determinantal point processes for extractive summarization. Here we can incorporate this optimization framework together with some of the recent deep neural representations. And we also extend this line of work by uh, generating summary highlights. The second part of the talk, I'm going to quickly go through some of our recent work on sentence theory, and I will talk about some opportunities and challenges. So the goal of the extractive summarization, um, initially we are given a set of uh, sentences. Uh, we have from one to n, n items in total. These correspond to all the sentences in the source documents. The goal of extractive summarization is to identify a subset of the sentences uh, that forms an extractive summary. Determinantal point processes is an optimization approach that defines a probability measure over all the subsets of the sentences. In this toy example, I have three sentences. And as you can see, in total, there are eight subsets uh, that can be generated from three sentences. And the DPP gives a probability score to each subset. And how is that probability score defined? In this case, on the left-hand side, I have the probability of a Y, and the Y is a subset that contains only two sentences. On the right-hand side, um, I have uh, this probability defined as the determinant of LY divided by the determinant of uh, L plus I. So this L is called ensemble matrix. It is a positive semi-definite matrix. In this toy example, I have three sentences, and it would be a three by three matrix. Each cell, each element in the matrix, it measures the correlation between the sentence I and the sentence J. And L of Y is a submatrix of L that contains only entries indexed by elements of Y. So in this case, I have a subset of Y that contains only two sentences, the green one and the orange one. And I will only get a submatrix L of Y by taking the entries that are indexed by these two sentences. And in this case, the probability of this summary Y is in fact proportional to the determinant of Ly, this submatrix. This is a very nice formulation because later we can do a decomposition of the L ensemble matrix. For every element of that matrix, we can decompose it into QI multiply SIJ and QJ. The QI and the QJ, these are called quality measures. And it is a positive real number indicating the quality of the sentence. SIJ is the measure of similarity between the sentences I and J. So this formulation allows us to separately model the sentence quality and the pairwise similarity, uh, and then later combining them together into a uniform, uh, unified optimization model. What is the interpretation here? Well, in this whole example, I have a subset of Y containing two sentences, I and J, and its probability is computed in this way. So the P of Y parameterized by the ensemble matrix L is in proportional to the determinant of this LY. And if you extend on the definition of determinant, uh, you get this equation where the probability of the subset is 
proportional to qi square multiply qj square multiply 1 minus sij squared. What does it mean? It means that if a particular sentence i is of high quality, then any summary that contains this sentence will have high probability. And if two sentences i and j are highly similar to each other, then you have the sij very close to one. And in that case, any summary that contains redundant sentences will have a very low probability. So we want to measure the quality of the sentence. Traditionally, we would use a feature-based approach, and we still use the feature-based approach in this work, uh, but we separate the features into two parts. One part is what we call surface features, which include the length and the position of a sentence in the document, and there is also the cosine similarity between the sentence and the document computed based on their TF-IDF vectors. So the surface features are still very important in order to predict whether or not a sentence is, should be included in the summary. But on the other end, we have the contextualized features nowadays created by BERT or other models. BERT is particularly uh, good on predicting uh, or generating contextualized representation for a sentence. In this case, we train the BERT model to estimate uh, whether or not a single sentence can be uh, should be included in the summary. So we actually got our training data from the single document summarization data. We do not need the multi-document summarization reference summaries for training such a model. Uh, so we could train a BERT model and then having the contextualized the sentence representations. And these sentence representations are going to be used as features uh, used to predict the quality of the sentence. On the other end, we also have pairwise sentence similarity. This is an example. Snowstorm slams Eastern US on Friday. And a strong wintry storm was dumping snow in eastern US after creating traffic havoc that claimed at least eight lives. So these two sentences apparently contain redundant information. But it's quite unique because they are not semantically equivalent. The second sentence includes more details uh, that is not covered by the first sentence. And they also do not have the entailment relationship. In order to predict whether or not two sentences contain redundant content, we have to construct our own data set. So in this case, we created our own data set that contains about 2 million sentence pairs in order to predict whether or not two sentences contain redundant information. So this data set is created by pairing each summary sentence with the most similar a document sentence. So you put these two sentences together and it becomes a positive example. And then negative examples are randomly sampled. And this is one example. We got the summary sentence from the CNN Daily Mail data set, which is a single document news data set. And then the second sentence is the, uh, the most similar document sentence. And then we could train the BERT model. Uh, BERT is very good at this task. And uh, we could train a BERT model predict SIJ, which indicates how likely two sentences contain redundant information. Uh, we also have the traditional similarity, which is the cosine similarity of the two sentence vectors. So in this case, we also incorporate uh, such cosine similarity, and we combine the two scores together by doing a linear interpolation. So to summarize the determinantal point framework, it provides an optimization approach that allows us to select the most probable subset uh, y from all the sentences uh, corresponding uh, to a set of documents. And in this process, uh, the selection allows us to identify the most representative sentences 
and we also can ensure there is high diversity among the selected sentences, uh, which corresponds to pairwise repulsion. These two attributes are highly desirable. And we also have two measures, one for measure the quality of each individual sentence. The other is a pairwise sentence similarity or its dissimilarity. Uh, and based on these two uh, estimates, and we can train the determinantal point processes. During training, our goal is to maximize the data log likelihood. Uh, in this example, I have M total training examples. And for every individual example, I'm trying to maximize the probability of a ground truth summary. This is the training process. And the parameters we're learning, uh, basically for each feature, we are learning its corresponding feature weight. DPP provides a very convenient way of uh, doing uh, the feature update using subgraded descent. It also allows us to combine the traditional optimization framework with the most recent deep contextualized representations. This is the reason why we are choosing this particular framework. And during testing, we have to do inference where the goal is to generate a system summary Why? given a learned DPP model. This inference process is still under intensive study. So here we take a greedy approach where we iteratively add one sentence to the collection so that the probability as predicted by the DPP model, it gives the highest score. So this is the inference process. We did some experiments on um, two data sets. One is the DAC data set, the other is tech. DAC for document understanding conference, tech for uh, text analysis conferences. These are uh, commonly used multi document summarization test sets. Uh, and the task here is to create a succinct summary of up to 100 words from a set of 10 news articles discussing a particular topic. And for evaluation, we use Rouge, um, which is the standard summarization evaluation metric. Rouge has multiple options. Here we use Rouge 1, Rouge 2, and Rouge SU4, uh, where Rouge 1 and Rouge 2 measures the unigram and bigram overlap between the system and the reference summaries. SU4, the S stands for skip bigram with a maximum distance of four words, and U stand for unigram. So SU4 is a combination of the unigram and the skip bigrams with a maximum distance of four words. So here are the summarization results where we compare our DPP model with uh, some of the extractive and abstractive models. Usually the score we look at is root 2 because this score is very difficult to optimize. It's even more difficult to improve for multi-document summarization because usually for the DAC and tech data sets, there are four human references and your system summary has to uh, basically overlap with all of the four human reference summaries in order to achieve higher scores. So root 2 uh, is the metric we are looking at. And in this case, the DPP model performs very well. And we also looked into the summaries and see if there is anything we could do better. So some observations indicate the current deep neural models, they do not measure word frequencies very well. But for multi-document summarization, this is actually important. If a particular phrase uh, is frequently mentioned in the collection of news articles, you can tell that's probably something important. And this is especially important for some topic words like quantities and name and like three minutes. If it frequently appears in the collection of articles, we have to um, we have to say that's important. And if both sentences mention the same three minutes, then it's actually redundant information. So currently, the deep neural models are not very good at. Uh, 
having the difference between the quantities like three million and five million, usually the model treats them equally. Um, we also did some experiments on the tech data set, which is, is another multi-document summarization data set. And uh, we find the DPP model works quite well in this case. So the conclusion here is um, usually the optimization based approach like determinantal point processes and integer linear programming, because they have an uh, optimization uh, framework, they usually perform very well on extractive summarization. But the advantage of DPP is we can actually incorporate the deep neural representations into this optimization framework so that it can make use of some of the most uh, uh, recent advances in deep learning. Okay, um, so next uh, our question is, can we do better and we are wondering, say, uh, instead of selecting whole sentences, can we select segments and then highlight those segments on the original articles so that we can allow a summary to be interpreted, to be understood in context. So this screenshot on the left hand side, uh, it is a, a newest feature released by Google just a couple of months ago. Google actually allows you uh, uh, to directly highlight your search results on the original web page. You don't need to do anything. The website operators don't need to do anything. Uh, it's just uh, been highlighted automatically on the web page. Traditionally, when we do a Google search, we type in the keywords and we look at the snippets and then we click on a particular link and then we go to the web page. We still have to manually find the important information that's related to the query by hand. But now you don't need to do that. And these uh, important or query relevant information is being automatically uh, highlighted on the original web page. So this is something we are quite interested in. So we are wondering whether or not we could do something similar to summarization and to allow the summaries to be interpreted in context. And this is important. The work is published in this year's EMLP conference. And we are thinking a highlighted text it has to be basically understandable on its own. And how can we tell if a particular segment is self-contained or not? We don't really have a clear definition on self-contained segments. But if I give you an example, and as a fluent speaker, you can probably tell that some segments are self-contained and some segments are not. On the left hand side, I have the one sentence uh, extracted from a news article and there are some segments, four segments that are generally believed to be self-contained. For example, some interstates are closed, hundreds of flights have been canceled as a wintry winter stop date. So these are segments that are understandable on its own. But on the other end, there are a lot of other segments that are not understand, understandable on its own. So how can we tell if a segment is self-contained or not? Here our assumption is a segment, uh, a self-contained segment is similar to a miniature sentence and it can be preceded or followed by end of sentence markers. Here specifically, we consider two markers, the periods and the commas. We insert two hypothetical tokens separately to the beginning and the end of a segment. The assumption here is uh, we are going to build contextualized representations for these two positions. And then we predict whether or not these two positions can be uh, insert uh, uh, end of sentence marker like the period and the commas. 
And uh, there's a one neural network, ExoNet, which serves our goal very well. So traditionally, uh, when we learn the deep neural models like a bird, barge, a lot of times it's trained left to right. Um, but uh, uh, this ExoNet actually has this mass, the two-string attention mechanism that allows us to create contextualized representations for specific positions and it fits our problem very well. So we created a contextualized representation uh, for the beginning position of the segment and for the end position of the segment and then we predict how likely that these two positions corresponding to period or end commas. So if, the, if there is a high probability, then uh, we think the segment is likely to be self-contained. In this way, we can create a self-containedness score for every segment. After that, we're going to uh, apply the DPP framework. In this toy example, um, I have a set of multiple and self-contained segments generated from the first sentence, uh, every segment has a quality score associated with it. On the left hand side, I did uh, similar things where we generate a set of partially overlapped and self-contained segments from the second sentence, sentence B, and every segment has a quality score associated with it. The DPP allows us to select a subset of the segments and those selected segments has to be uh, non-overlapping and contain little redundancy. In this example, on the left hand side, I have one segment, powerful winter storm goes in Midwest. Because of this segment, it has high quality score. It also has a high similarity with a segment a powerful winter stop on the right hand side and the second segment cannot be selected because it contains high redundancy with, uh, with the highlighted segment on the left hand side. So in this way, we can leverage the terminal point processes to identify an optimal subset of the segments to form the summary highlights. And again, we did the same experiments on the dot data set. So conclusion here is if we evaluate by root, we can get similar uh, root scores. Uh, this is actually a very, very challenging task to highlight segments because our search space is very big now rather than selecting individual sentences, we're not selecting segments. So the search space has been greatly expanded. Uh, but we also have the benefit. The benefit is we don't have to highlight the entire sentence, but now we are highlighting the segments, which is a more simpler structure here. Uh, and we are still quite happy that we got similar root scores. And next, I want to show some example summaries. This is one summary generated by LexRank, which is a graphical based extractive summarization approach that usually performs very robustly on uh, text documents. So the sentences extracted by LexRank are usually very long and comprehensive. This is because it's a graphical based approach. So the sentence uh, that is closest to, to the centroid usually is being selected. And if the sentences are long, they have a higher chance of being selected. And this is the sentence the summary generated by the pointer generator summarizers. This is one of the uh, abstractive summarization models. The problem with the current abstractive summarization models is the system can hallucinate. So it will generate something that it contains new meanings that does not uh, occur in the original documents. And the same problem also occurs for some of the more recent models like BART. The problem here is um, if we want to use a summarization system in any real world applications, it cannot make any mistakes if the summarization system makes 
it's like 0.1% of the chance the system made such mistake. We cannot use it in reality because of the legal issues. You do not want to uh, mislead the users of your system and there's going to be a lot of uh, legal issues involved with that. So the GPT model, uh, it can select a balanced collection of representative and diverse summary sentences. And finally, the human reference summary is the best. We also show this uh, the summary generated by the highlighting method. Rather than highlighting the entire sentence, we want only highlight one segment from each sentence. And these are uh, some of the examples. Uh, there are some uh, uh, good cases. There are also some bad cases where the system cannot effectively identify a self-contained segment. And uh, I think this is something we still have to work on. But uh, I feel highlighting segments is something uh, is very useful. Uh, in the next uh, section of this talk, I'm going to talk about the surface realization and specifically some of our recent work on uh, sentence fusion. Uh, we are also quite interested in abstractive models, but I have to realize there are some issues with uh, uh, most of the state-of-the-art abstractive summarizers. So in this study, we analyzed the five abstractive summarization systems. For each summary sentence, we try to assign it to one of the four categories. So the first category is compression, means the summary sentence is generated by shortening a document sentence. The second category is fusion, means the summary sentence is generated by fusing two or more document sentences. The third category is copy, means the summary sentence is directly copied from the source document. The final category is we, we couldn't assign the summary sentence to any of these categories. Um, so majority of the cases, we found that the pointer generator model usually directly copy sentences from the original documents. Some of the recent abstractive models, I think they are better at compressing and fusing sentences. But still, a vast majority of the cases, the abstractive summarizers do not fuse sentences. It's not as frequent as we would do as human writers. And to make things worse, um, a lot of the cases, about 38% of the cases when the system tries to fuse two sentences or two or more sentences, it usually makes mistakes and it will introduce some incorrect effects. And this is uh, not good. Uh, so we realized that the system are still struggling to reliably perform sentence fusion and we have to do something about it. What we did is we look at how humans write summaries and we find summary sentences written by humans uh, that are created by merging two document sentences and we try to identify their points of correspondence, which are the phrases highlighted here. And these are cohesive devices that tie two sentences together into a summary sentence. In the first example, that's a phenomenal uh, referencing. In the second uh, example, that is also a co-referenced example. So when humans merging the two document sentences, human actually use those points of correspondence uh, as a connecting point. We also look into other categories. There are common nouns. There are also repetitions where the same uh, name is used to connect the two sentences together. There's also event triggers like arrested and convicted. Those are likely to be used uh, uh, close to each other. So we created our own data set continue annotations for points of correspondence. And these are text chunks that convey the same meanings. 
and they are cohesive devices that tie the sentences together. In total, we annotated about 1,600 uh, examples, and they are taken from a bit over a thousand documents. And next, so we want to uh, create our own sentence building model just to, to test the ability of the current abstractive summarizers saying, okay, these are two sentences and they can be merged together. Uh, can you teach the system to do this? In this example, I have two sentences. Alan Donald has confirmed that he's to step down as the South Africa bowling coach. And Alan Donald is uh, referred to as the 48-year-old former test tech man, it's the same person, and then the uh, South Africa bowling coach, of course, is part of the coaching team. And when humans generate summaries, one possibility is a human can say, Alan Donald served as South Africa bowling coach since 2011. Uh, so in this case, we define sentence fusion as uh, two things. First, we have to determine what content uh, to take from each sentence in order to generate the, the summary sentence. And then we have to uh, weave together the text pieces uh, in, into a well-formed summary sentence. And we presented a system based on the transformer model that allows us to uh, shorten the distance between important words. So in this example, on the right-hand side, the blue part, I want to predict the next word after John, and John loves his dog. But on the source text, the distance between John and the loves is quite far away. Uh, it would be very difficult to shift the attention for a long distance from John to Lars on the left hand side. So instead, we inserted some boundary tokens, S for start, E for end, and we inserted such tokens around John Smith and around the he. In this case, it allows the system to make a short jump, jumping from John to the end token and from one end token to another end token corresponding to the same entity and then do the jumping from the second end token to blocks. So in this case, instead of uh, having the system shift the attention for a long distance, we try to create some linking mechanism so that the system can uh, jump short distance in order to predict the next word of labs. Okay, finally, I want to talk about uh, evaluation issues. Summarization evaluation has been a long-standing issue uh, in the community and the same evaluation metric uh, is also applied to many other text generation tasks, including machine translation, uh, data to text generation, uh, image captioning, and perhaps many more generation tasks. Usually, when we do summary evaluation, we would have some expectations regarding the summary. We want the summary to be informative, succinct, grammatical. They have to be true to original. They have to be trustworthy and better satisfy users' information needs. But a lot of times, the current evaluation metric doesn't quite uh, evaluate such properties, uh, rouge, uh, blue, and a lot of other metrics uh, basically compare the system summary with the reference summaries based on the in-graph overlap between the two pieces of text. So a lot of times we have to wonder, are we optimizing the same goal? When we do generation, we are using the cross entropy loss majority of the times. But such cross entropy loss doesn't always uh, connect to any of these nice properties we would expect from the summary. So my collaborator uh, and I, uh, they are at uh, TU Darmstadt in Germany. We have this new evaluation metric as an initial attempt called the MOVA score. 
The idea is we want to draw on some of the most recent uh, deep learning, deep contextualized representations and use that to evaluate uh, how good our system summaries are. The idea is we are comparing a system generated text with a reference text uh, based on first uh, alignment strategy uh, based on the earth movers distance and then uh, when we try to build the alignment uh, this is dependent on the individual token representations created by uh, the deep uh, contextualized representations. So to summarize, uh, in this talk, I talked a bit about uh, multi-document summarization. Uh, we use the determinantal point processes to extract the important sentences uh, from a collection of news articles. And then we also attempted to identify self-contained segments and try to highlight the segments in place so that we can understand a, a summary in context which is important in many domain-specific applications. I also talked about the current uh, state-of-the-art for sentence fusion and some of the challenges we are currently facing. And of course, um, where there is challenge, there is great opportunity. And uh, um, potentially, uh, there may be some other interesting uh, opportunities out there. Um, that should be uh, the end of my talk. Um, and these are uh, some of the articles that's been referred to uh, during my talk.